Tales from Diphyria. Episode 1, Bounties and Beehives. Greetings gamers and welcome back to a brand new D&D adventure here on the Lasercorn channel. Today I will be playing uh, my dwarf warrior, Krulax. And Krulax has, has escaped uh, the empire of Korin Ra with his good friend Kaizen, uh, played by Mari. We have entered a tavern. A tavern and we're kind of on the run. We may or may not uh, have tried to, uh, you know, rob the empire of Korin Ra's treasury. Uh, we, we felt we were owed. Anyway, long story, long story short, we're here in the Goldarn Combine, and uh, it sounds like, gosh darn, the gosh darn, the Goldarn Combine, and uh, we've entered a tavern, me and Kaizen, uh, Mari, say hi. Uh, yes, hello, my name is Kaizen Voldra, uh, a, a wood elf of aristocratic lineage, hailing from the sexy, infamous Milf Milfwood Forest. Uh, I've, I've left my roots, of course, um, in the back country, so to speak. Uh, I have found myself amongst the monks, uh, and I've picked up some some cool ass fighting skills. Uh, I meditate a lot. I, uh, I I've got a cool cool monkish aesthetic, uh, uh, and, and I speak a lot of languages. I'm currently single, um, but you know uh, I have my, my my sights set on the king. Uh, but you know the king of Targus, yes. We, yes, you have, a, you have a thing for the king, the king of Targus. Yes, 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 yes. You know, it's it's one of those um, marry then scheme to take over the realm sort of things, but you know, just your general sort of schemes. Very good. Yeah, you gave it a little character description there. I should probably do that for Krulax. Krulax is a dwarf. Uh, he got in a little bit of trouble with the law back in Targus. Uh, he he likes his axes. Krulax uh, carries two throwing axes and also a, a battle axe with uh, with fire magic imbued in it. And, uh, and he got in a little trouble. He doesn't like beekeepers. He threw a barkeeper into a beekeeper. It was a whole thing. And, uh, and but, but he likes, uh, he likes money. He likes coin. And so he's out to, to earn himself some of that. And, uh, he likes coin and axes. He's a simple dwarf with simple tastes. And, uh, we're here in this bar. And, uh, also in this bar, uh, happens to be, uh, a bounty hunter of some renown. A man, uh, named Falamir. And uh, I'll let uh, Joven, who, who previously was our DM, but now is getting into the game as his own character, introduce himself and Fadimir. That's right, Joven is now rolling dice against the DM. Uh, it's nice to be on this side. Could I have picked a better team? Yes, probably, most likely. Hey! This is where I was invited. Uh, I, I play Falamir. Uh I'm a ranger. <laughs> There's there's not a lot that uh, you guys know about me yet, but we've got a, we've got some episodes where, where you'll you'll learn about this new ranger character. Now this is a class that I've never played as before, and admittedly, I don't know if I messed up while making my character, but I have like one thing. All I can do is <laughs> one attack. So uh, we're gonna see how well that works out for me as we play. As a guy that pretty much hits things with axes all the time, I right. can I can relate to this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, y'all are level two adventurers. Yeah. You know, you have time to grow and change and add maybe another sharp weapon to your arsenal Ooh. as your second thing you can do. Yes. So add a baby uh, axe. I want a baby axe. And setting the stage uh, for this adventure is our DM, Ruben Yay! Bressler. He's here with us now. And uh, yeah, say, and he's wearing a cool hat. Say hi. That's right. I have, I have a cool hat, I have an excellent quarantine beard, and I'm ready to roll some dice for you all. I'm very excited. So uh, allow me, if I may, to set the stage for do. the beginning of our adventure. As so many adventures begin, this one starts in a tavern. Kaizen Voldra and Krulax, just, just Krulax, no last name, that we know of, have escaped the island of Korin Ra and arrived safely on Point Barrake, in the Raldarn Combine. Now, with warrants out for their arrests, in at least Wait, three- Wait, Point Barrake? <laughs> yeah, Point Barrake. <laughs> yeah, Point Barrake, that's uh, where you are. Point <laughs> very good. I caught yeah. that. Well, nice. you know, when nice. you give me leave to name yeah, things- Yeah, yeah, no, I said name things, thank you. Point Barrake in the Raldarn <laughs> Combine. Now with warrants out for their arrests in at least three different nations, fortunately not in the one they're currently in, the duo has made their way to a tavern looking for work. And there is uh, a shady individual in a corner. 
mm. among others in this less than uh, less than scrupulous tavern. What would you like to do? Well, I probably should confer with my uh, associate here. Like, uh, <clears throat> all right, uh, look, Kaizen, let's just let's just agree to never talk about the failed uh, treasury heist again. Can we both? Just agree to that. Failed? I don't know how you mean failed. I mean, we've got a few arrest warrants on us. My parents are gonna be so pissed about this, and I love, love that I'm still rebelling against them. Be that as it may, uh, successful and unsuccessful. Uh, we didn't, we didn't quite get the money we were looking for. That big score we were gonna retire on. So it's time for us to get back into the action. Uh, what do you think of bounty hunting? Yeah, I'm into it, you know. I can use some of my skills. You you can get that coin that yeah. you're so so after. You know, I mean, my, my parents come from a pretty illustrious lineage. I don't really need the coin, but I just want to be a badass, you know? I just want to be the bad girl. Okay. So, uh, at this point, um, you, you two are talking pretty loudly in this seedy karaoke bar. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Falomir, go ahead and make a perception check uh, at advantage. The other two... Uh, go ahead and make a perception check at disadvantage. Interesting. Because, Falomir, you're listening, you're overhearing this, and the other two, I'm seeing if you even notice that he's there. Seven. <laughs> uh, yeah. Falomir, uh, you're going to do the same. You're going to roll two, but take the higher number, because you're rolling at advantage. So I rolled two. My first roll was a three. My second roll is going to be a seven. So in total, I've got a nine perception. Ooh, I rival you because I rolled a four as my lower. And I have plus five perception, so nine. Oh, okay. So, Krulax, uh, with your seven, not great. And the nines aren't too great either. Um, so, uh, the way that I think that this is going to play out would be that you're pretty much advertising. Like, you've, you've come <laughs> to this bar and you know that you're trying to get some work. You are you know, sort of flaunting like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we were bounty hunters? Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. And uh, Falomir posted up at the corner, uh, the ranger that he is, likely smoking from a pipe, shady, feet up on the table or something, something or other. Um, perhaps distracted by how cool you look. You aren't exactly paying attention, but you catch the word bounty hunter. And so then that clues you in to what's going on. Bounty hunting? No. Us? I I can't even imagine us bounty hunting. Could you, Krulax? I mean, I could I could catch a bounty or two. I mean, what are these axes for if not to take down delicious bounties? Delicious. That's oh right. my yeah, god, I mean, you guys are so for? loud <laughs> over <laughs> there. Hey, over here. Oh, uh, the man. We've never seen you here. That before. man with the very natural accent seems to be beckoning to us. <laughs> I think maybe uh, we should go speak to him. He oh, looks um, cool. Do, I love his facial hair. Let's go talk to him. Lie, do my eyes lie to me? Who is this by my stars and goddess? Is this the infamous Cruel Sword? No, it, well, it's Cruel Axe. You can yeah, tell by Cruel the Sword. I, I have heard the tales of Cruel Sword. You mm. attack with all of the different swords, so shiny and bulky. No, you're, you're so close, but it's actually axes are my thing. Cruel axe. Oh, you switch to axes. axes. What a different type of weapons. No, I never switch. It was always cruel axe. It's not difficult to remember. And you. Oh, look at this tall drink of water. Ah, I must imagine you are the famous Kaizen, yes? Yes, yes, I am Kaizen. You you, you said you are uh, Falimer of the of the, of the mares, is that right? Uh, of, yes, of the mare my, family? My, my expectations uh, presound me. Hi, my name is Felomir Owens. <laughs> oh no, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my common is is as you say, not good. Bro, oh yes, that's a very uh, that's a very believable excuse as to why you use the wrong words. It's because it's your second uh, language. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I hear that you are looking for some work. A little gold in the pouch, eh? Yeah, we're trying to get some action, if you know what well, I mean. Yeah, uh, you want some gold in uh, that pouch. Oh, you want some action? There is yeah. an upstairs. I can get you in touch with the brothel owner. Yes? Is that what no, you no, 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 not that kind. We were, we were thinking more bounty hunting. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, then please, walk into my office right over here. By office, what you mean is the corner booth. Um, which is <laughs> well is separated off from the rest of the room, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not exactly 
uh, the fanciest digs you've ever seen, but it is much more private over here in the corner. Can I get you guys a drink? Or no? No? Probably no, right? No. Okay, good. But, I need well, you sober for this. Oh, he sounds you see. cheap. <laughs> why, 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 is he, why, is he not, why, is, why is he not getting us drinks? Now, what I, I was trying to tell you earlier when I saw you and I was distracted by your not swords is that I, uh, Falamere, are here to put together a little uh, bounty hunter guild, if you will. And we, wow, a whole we only guild, have, huh? yeah, We only have the most dangerous adventures and uh, the biggest paying jobs, so I assume the heroes of Zen or Koran Ra, whatever island it was, I do not remember. I have only heard the tales. I think that maybe perhaps you would like to go on adventures and get some gold, no? How yeah. many people are in this guild? How many people in this uh, Stabby Stabby Club? Oh, who is this I hear? Look at you asking dirty questions! No, no, no! You do not come into a shady establishment wanting details! No! A few details might be nice, but... So I can wait, get so you the, job wait, details and I can you know get you what? He, what? He's got a point, uh, Kaizen. He doesn't really need members. All he needs is... Yeah, do you have a job? Like a bounty? Because, I mean... I do have a job, but I, I am a little skeptical about you because from what I heard, you were part of a much larger group. You traveled with a party of, of two different groups when you took down an entire navy. And here you are, just the two of you. Did you get your team killed? Yeah! What <laughs> Well, you know, not everyone survived, and uh, some of the members of the group had a little problem with us, <clears throat> you know, robbing a trip. Look, we don't need to get into it. Uh, we're, we're traveling alone now. Oh, we so are now main... you don't Listen. want to answer my questions. Now you understand? We yeah, maybe we should just stop with the questions. Our look, lives. look, Kaizen and I were the powerhouses of that group, okay? Everyone else was just dragging us down, holding us back, not letting us reach our full potential, okay? You got... You got the rock stars oh, okay. of the group, okay? Oh, the rock stars, all right. Uh, you know, I have heard tell that Kaizen decided to fight a god while in prison and then almost got her whole team executed. Where are you hearing all these stories? <laughs> Look, oh, I am a gatherer of... I'm a, a gatherer of tales and stories. I just need to know who I bring into my guild is up for good fights. But yes, I we're do up, have a job if you are interested. Well, yes, I... Well, okay, here, what's the job? Take yeah, a look at this. In. Here, I'm going to slide this paper, this little contract across the table. I will let, you know, some uh, your voices read it inside of your heads. I can slide <laughs> over a piece of paper, but he can't buy us drinks. <laughs> Bad date. Yep. Piece of paper slid ah. across the table. Okay. Ah. So, Krulax, you reach for the paper? Is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah, I pick up the paper. Uh, you're after Quick a... question. Huh? Quick question. Can you read? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, he is Krulax, not Krul Book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, this is uh, yes, this is quite the body. Uh, but you know, uh, I, I think... Uh, here, let, here, Kaizen, why don't you take it and see if you think that this is a bounty we should take. I know what the bounty is because I can read. But I want you to read it for yourself, to hear it in your own head, and then decide if, if this is a bounty we, we want to take. Yes, I, I, I know many languages. I can read this, but I, I just want you to try to read one thing. Read, read one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw oh, okay. for me. Ah, it's, an, eight, can... it's an 18. Okay, so 18. Yeah, you got some words. You can read this. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll read it. As reward... Uh, ne necro, ne necro man fur. Uh, some sort of necro man that is furry. Uh, uh did I put a, a little smudge on that? I am so sorry. It should say necromancer. A necromancer? You're after a necromancer? That Don't they the raise the says, dead? No. Yes, they raised it. Hey, do you want the gold that this uh you receive? This is not like little baby trips. No. We so are here for the most to dangerous of adventures. To exposit to the audience and also to Kaizen, uh, as you read over Krulax's shoulder uh, and Krulax as you try to decipher common, uh, there is a bounty. Uh, it is for the capture of Batu, mm -hmm. uh, who is a ne rogue necromancer, 
and the bounty has been put out by someone named Andor, who is uh, a leader of Pilgar, uh, which is a nation uh, north and to the east of here, um, pretty far away. So you are to bring in Batu uh, alive, it says here, um, if you can. And, to, and if you don't, well, that is the only way that you'll be able to collect the bounty. Now, what we have here is probably one of the most dangerous bounties in the area, and I hope that you are up for it. Yes, it is a necromancer. Uh, his name is Batu. Very, very dangerous. A dangerous, smelly individual. <sighs> it smells of death and plague. Mm. But, uh, you know, for heroes as such as yourself, this would be no problem, no? Yeah, we, we can take a necromancer, right? We, we we fought those dire trolls. How much harder could a necromancer be? Now, if you look around here, there is just not much for bounty hunters. So, it, unfortunately, it seems to be just the two of you. I've been here for days waiting for a hero to join, and by the gods, all they gave me is you two. Well, well the gods were pretty what? nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, why, 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 did, why didn't you look for other people in your guild of X number I am number of... looking for more people. I am building the guild. You think this is my first mission? No. Uh, Se seems like it might be his first mission, honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, it sounds no like it might name. be. But right, I dare whatever. you. I will take this to anyone else in my guild of bounty. No, no. We're, we're in. Yeah, we're yeah, in. Yeah, Calm yeah, down. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll yeah, help yeah. you take this bounty down. And we split it three ways fairly, right? Three ways, just the three of us. Just All the right. three of us. I think so, we're <laughs> The three of you, now a, tr a duo becomes a trio, and you begin making your way uh, to your mode of conveyance. I assume you have, do you have like horses, you have a cart, or are you going on foot there, Falomir? Yeah, 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 I just, uh, I had my own horse. Uh, these two will have to rent some uh, ponies from the stables. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, pony rental uh, is just five silver. Uh, so if you fork over one gold, you can rent two ponies. Um, so mark that down on your sheets. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, you heroes will have to pay for your own horses. I do not pay for your horses yet. Uh, Falomir, you best. have your what own mare. Uh, what yes, is your... I have my own. What is your horse's name? It is uh, Quiver. Quiver, nice. So you, yes. uh, you three. Not like the thing that the body does, but like where the arrows go. It's Thank you for that thing. clarity. Yes. I, I saw you in my screen looking at me all funny. Uh huh. I mean, common is his second language, so it, it could be <laughs> it could be a miscommunication. But the three of you and your steeds begin making your way into the countryside of Ral Darn. Because, uh, Falomer, you know uh, that the lead that you have is, to, is uh, in the direction of Goldbairn Cemetery, which is further inland in the land of Raldairn in Goldbairn. Raldairn, Goldbairn. See how it... So, you are on your way. There is a nice dirt path um, after the cobblestones of Point Barake end. And you're traveling for about an hour, I would say. When I need you all to make perception checks. I have rolled a 17 plus my two perception is 19. I have rolled a seven plus three. Oh, I have perception, so 10. I rolled a 18 plus five Ooh. perception. Well, uh, Krulax, okay. you're kind of a little distracted, I would say, by the being out in the wilderness. It's been a long time since you've been surrounded by something that isn't just the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just nice to be out in nature, you know? So, yeah, Krulax, surprisingly, as a dwarf, it seems, is the one who uh, is most distracted by the loveliness of the area flora and fauna. The other two of you, you see up ahead, um, about 30 feet in front of you, it looks like a bee's nest is hanging from a branch and is hanging directly in the line of where you're headed above the trail. Ah, uh, look at this. Ah, uh, bees still buzzing around here at the night. Ah, uh, they will spook our horses. We'll be trying to keep these horses' anxiety down for the rest of the night. Ah, uh, hey, uh, bounties, go do me a favor. Break down that, uh, that, uh, beehive. Oh, oh, you're... Beekeeping. Well, um, let me see. 
Oh, you take too long. Hold on. As I trot behind these two, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I pull out my bow and arrow, and yep. I go to shoot at the beehive. Sure, make an, make an attack roll. Uh, attack roll. All right. So I shall roll my d20. Stationary target, 30 feet away. Not too tough to hit for an archer such as yourself. 13. You're, it's easy to hit a stationary target. This is target practice. You shoot your, you aim your arrow, you knock it on the from your quiver on the back of quiver, and it goes straight through the beehive. It does not make a noise. It, it it's as if the beehive wasn't even there. And then, you see a beehive appear, five feet to the left, on a different tree. I do not remember having too many drinks at the bar, but now I am seeing the bar. Well, that okay. one actually just blinks out of existence, and another beehive floats directly five feet in front of the three of you and drops to the ground. What? Where did this beehive uh, come from? Uh, sensing danger. Uh, Run! I, I, I turn my horse back and just go back about 20 feet. Okay. Someone check that out. Uh, what is I would that? Like to, I, would like to move, I would like to move cautiously away from the beehive axis drawn. I do not pay you okay. to be cautious. You don't. You haven't uh, paid me anything. <laughs> I know. As you, bee, like, as you back away from the beehive, it rolls towards you at the same speed and stops the same distance away from you. I, I guess I run away. Are there bees coming out? What's that? I mean, it's just sitting there. The bees are just sort of hanging out and just like all floating right. around the beehive. Um, Doesn't look like they're angry. All right, I will cautiously try to move around them then, so we can continue on the path. As you move around them. The beehive is preventing you from moving forward. It is going to mirror your movement. All right. Okay, this uh, is silly. I would like to Who throw did a, a trick on us? I would like to throw an axe at the beehive then. Great. Roll an attack roll. Okay. 18. 18. Yeah, you hit the beehive. Hooray! All right. Nothing happens. The axe goes through the beehive like it's not even there, and you hit the ground. Oh, look, you did the thing that I did just as well. Oh, did go you not ahead know that and make wrong an intelligent. Go ahead and make an intelligence investigation check. 19. I think that that's going to be the spell save DC. You are able to determine that this is an illusion. Oh, an guys, illusion. the beehives aren't real. It's just an illusion. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I've seen this trick before. I believe it's called a Tupac. A, a Tupac? Yes, yes. The oh, the Almighty yeah, right, Shakurs right, right. Ah. have uh, have ha, they have shamanistic instincts and they have been able to create this perso this uh, this mm. illusion called the Tupac. Well, it is slowing uh. us down. Keep on going. If this is not here, then we do not need to worry about this. Yeah, let's just walk as, right through it then. As you say that, um, and you look over at Krulax, it looks like Krulax's head is a beehive now. The horns are poking out the side of the beehive. Um, Krulax, you don't even see it. The other two of you, Krulax just looks like a beehive is, has a head. Oh, devil's horns, what is this magic? All right, I go ahead and I knock another arrow and I point it at no, no, Krulax's face. No, 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 It's an illusion. No, no. We've established it's an illusion. Just ignore my beehive head. Or how do I know I did not pick up some kind of sucky bitch that you are? A demon pretending to be something else. And I you just want to suck demon. my energy. I can vouch this man is no demon. He yeah, is a dwarf. Yeah, Kaizen will vouch for me. Look, let's and just... And you know, if we had anything to drink that you gave us, I would I would say that you put something in our drink. But yeah. you were too cheap to buy us anything. So you I didn't... Did not, you call me cheap, I call me cautious. Uh, all right, let's just keep going. Maybe this is just an enchanted area with with enchanted weird beehives. Let's just keep moving down the path. Maybe we'll get out of the, beehive. the range okay, of the beehives. Fine. So you're just going to try to move past this enchanted yeah. beehive illusion area? Yeah. Yes, gallop. Gallop away. Gallop, gallop straight through. So as you're trying to escape these terrifying illusionary bees, uh, you see a, a, a gnome emerge from the bushes. Hey, what's up? It's me, Deborah Mustard. I knew it. I knew it. So, you guys come down, came down my path. I used those bees and I robbed people. You weren't looking, but I had my mage hand. I was taking all your gold. My, my gold's by gone. The, by the fear of of a talking rock, I shoot another arrow at him. <laughs> oh, shit. At the gnome? Yeah. All right. Yo, go ahead and make attack and, roll. Can I try and stop that? Because I recognize this guy. Sure. You make a dexterity check. Okay. I, see him, I see him drawing his bow. No, no. I know this guy. 
Oh, Athletics got it. It's a, it's a one. <laughs> Plus. Well, the arrow is knocked. It's a natural. Oh, jeez, I rolled a two. So that's probably going to miss Deborah Mustard. As you see a pointy arrow narrowly miss your uh, your midsection there. And I, I say to, I say to uh, Falomir, I'm like, yo, dude, stop shooting at him. I know this guy. He's just a, he's a prankster. This is Debra. We we know each other. We used to uh This is not a Debra. Together. This is a little a pet rock right here that can talk. No, I've he's, never he's seen a rock, rock that can talk. He's a rock gnome. A rock gnome? Wait. Hey, dude, it's so good to see you. I thought you were dead. What, we thought what you died, Debra. Yeah, we, we had a funeral. You had a funeral? You didn't even invite me? We thought we you know, were dead. Everybody knows the little <laughs> Yeah, pet I mean, rock. you were there in spirit, we thought. Well, you know, at the uh, end of our last adventure, I sacrificed myself in order to lead all those beetles down that pit. And uh, the pit, I thought it would end at some point, but it was just, it just kept going. I was in the pit falling for what felt like hours, might have been four or five hours, uh, crazy. So I just uh, started like Mega Manning wall to wall until I uh, got my way out. But then, you know, everyone was gone. So I figured that, uh, you know, a uh, game was over and I would go home. So everyone is okay with the rock that talks. All right, fine. This is new normal. Okay. It's a rock gnome. Deborah. we're so glad you're alive. We're so, we're so glad you survived that pit. This is Falomir. Uh, he actually offered us a chance to go bounty hunting with him. We we kind of need some money after you died, or, or we thought you died. We brought the horn uh, where it needed to go, uh, and then yep. we tried to rob mm -hmm. some people, and now we uh, we kind of need some money. Also, I'm I'm gonna need my money back. But do you want to go uh, do some bounty hunting with us? You know what? I'll I'll go do some bounty hunting with you, but you're gonna have to hire me, and it'll cost you 39 gold which is all the gold I stole from each of you. Aha! We don't, we don't have that much money. I didn't even have that much on me. I had nine. I thought, I thought each of you had 10 in your pocket. I had to rent these horses. Uh, how, how about you give us our money back and we split the bounty as your payment? Oh, what is this? Now we are bringing on the little pet rock and I need to cut a share with him? He's not a I bounty hunter. I thought you hunter. wanted more in your guild. Don't you want more people in your club that I you want have more so bounty many people in? in my guild. This point, hey. I feel like we're the only one in your guild. <laughs> yeah. Plus, this dude, this and dude has magic powers. D D Deborah, show him the, the Eldritch Bolt. Magic? Yeah, I'm going to Eldritch Bolt uh, uh, in between his feet, and I'm going to make him do the splits, hopefully, with the explosion. Yeah, go ahead and make, um, make an attack roll to so see how well you aim. I rolled a five, and with my spell attack bonus, that's plus three, so I rolled an eight. <laughs> Great. So you are you're aiming for a spot of dirt. Um, you didn't critically fail, so you're able to hit a spot of dirt that's five feet in front of you. It's not terribly difficult, um, and uh, you know you can you can do the little gunslinger make them dance action. Uh, keep in mind, I am on a horse. Oh sure. Well, you can make the horse dance. Pow, 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 pow. Oh, look at that. You make my little pony prance. All right. The rock monster can stay fine. It rock, rock gnome. Rock, oh, I'm sorry. Rock. Big rock. Yes, okay, okay. Do you have a method of conveyance, Deborah? Uh, I've got a special mage hand, um, and I use it in, in order to help myself uh, get on the back of uh, Kaizen's horse. I'm going to ride a uh, duo with Kaizen. So you are now the duo became a trio. Now the foursome is together and you are um, reconnoitered with your lost comrade and you're ready <clears throat> to take on what lies ahead. And it is uh, a little while on horseback northeast from the rocky coast of Point Barrek into the rocky, into the flatlands of Raldern. Um, prairie and savanna lands are occasionally broken up by the occasional fields of corn and soybeans. Um, you see an occasional farmhouse. There's a, a lake every once in a while. Is there anything you want to do on your way before you uh, make your, before you finish your journey? It's like, all right, we're going up against a necromancer. Uh, does anyone have any, uh, anything we should do to, you think we should do to prep for this? Well, what don't dead people like? They don't like fire, right? Maybe we should light all this corn on fire. All the what? All the corn? What, why would we light the corn on fire when the necromancer is not here? Yeah, we should maybe wait till we engage. But that's I like I like where your head's at. I've got dark vision, so uh, I'm gonna keep my eyes nice and keen, keep them uh, hydrated. Yep. How how far are we from the cemetery? You're still pretty. You're still a couple hours out, probably. 
Ooh, um, why, you know why we, are we focused guys, on Guys, you know what we could do? We could take some of the corn husks and we could ball them up and maybe pour some lantern oil on them and, and make sticky bombs. And then if we get in trouble, we just stick it and then nice. maybe, uh, maybe Deborah can just like Eldritch bolt it to ignite it and then we can set them on fire that way. Yeah, you guys want to make some sticky fire. bombs to prep? Uh, sticky bombs should prep. I'm a second level now, so I got a new ability called Blazing Hands. Uh, burning hands. Oh, you have burning hands? You can shoot, I've wait, burning your Debra, ring. are you telling me you can shoot fire out of your hands now? Yes, let me show you by burning down all this corn. That is awesome. No, 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 Maybe I should have asked before this. Have you guys ever fought a necromancer before? <laughs> have yeah, we ever? Yeah, you know I've Have we ever fought a <laughs> necromancer? Uh, uh, yes, I, I would what? just assume no, really that the answer hung up on is that yes. Is there. And you know what necromancers do? They bring the dead back to life and use those as tools to attack with. And a zombie has never once cared that it is on fire. You must destroy the brain or dismember the entire body. What do you want to get corn husk to make fire bomb? Hey, you zombie? know what? Do we tell you how to groom your ridiculous mustache? Why don't you let us handle our business here? I'm making sticky uh, bombs. All right. <laughs> I, what do I know? You are the heroes of Zenra. <laughs> I would like to all attempt right, so to craft sticky corn husks out of corn husks and lantern oil. Fantastic. So you're able to harvest uh, a good amount of, uh, of husks and and uh, 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 put together uh, some number of, of balls of these husks. So Deborah, <laughs> you are gonna make a tinkering roll to try to make some sticky bombs. And we'll say that since you're making bombs, uh, I'm gonna let you use your artificer's lore, which means that you're gonna add twice your proficiency bonus as you're making these devices. So add six. I rolled a 10. So 16. Yes. Great. Now roll a d4 for me. That's gonna be the little triangle. I rolled a three. Great. You have three sticky bombs. Woo! Nice. So go ahead and note that you have three sticky bombs. Um, and you don't know exactly what they'll do, um, but you have them and they're sticky. Am I going to ask how the little rock monster made the corn husks sticky? How do corn stick? I don't need to know. I never mind. You've eaten corn on the cob before. It's sticky. When you get your hand, you gotta go wash your hands after. Also, we threw some lantern oil in there so it would burn. So you have uh, three sticky bombs. Um, And that took about an hour to do using your tinker's tools. So it is late in the evening at this point. You continue your way past the fields, um, and eventually the grass and prairie lands give way to badlands. Flat packed dirt as far as the eye can see. There's no shrubs, no hills, no fields to set on fire. It's so desolate that you look forward to the occasional rock. So it's a sight to behold when on the horizon you can make out a lone hill in the distance. Go ahead and make um, make a history check for me. All of us? History check. Uh, whoever thinks that they may have heard of these this cemetery before can make a history uh, check. Joven, sir, I got uh, a, I'm sorry. That would probably from here. be me. Yeah. I, got a, I would I got say zero. Deborah also. Okay. Oh, yeah, Deborah also. Uh, and I'm just a 10. Uh, I rolled a 14. And then, so your history is a plus two, so you got a 16. Ooh. Yeah. Deborah did not miss history class. So, Falomir, you look in the distance, and this hill is um, oddly shaped. It is not completely natural looking. Um, you have heard of this sort of thing in uh, the middle of Raldern. This is how they tend to, because the central portions of Raldern are very desolate and very flat and um, uh, experience occasional flooding because of rainstorms, typically they just pile up uh, boxes where people would be buried. Um, and that is essentially the equivalent of their graveyards. Oh, because they don't want the, the, the bodies in the ground because f- flooding and... Because the, the flooding would, like, make it all weird, Got essentially. Uh, so a really crappy mausoleum. More... 
essentially a really cla crappy mausoleum. Um, Deborah, you can certainly uh, pick out that this is exactly what you're looking for. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, mostly wood and stone, some other materials that you scarcely recognize, stacked haphazardly uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're still a couple hundred feet out. Would anyone like to do anything? I just want to let everyone know, hey guys, real quick, it's Deborah Mustard down here. I know, it's hard to see me sometimes. I just want you guys to know that that's not a real hill. That looks like hundreds upon hundreds of uh, what can only be described as coffins, some made of wood, some made of stone, piled on top of each other. So we got to be in the right place. I mean, this has got to be a cemetery, and I'm sure our guy is going to make all these bodies, you know, come out. So I'm just saying, you know, I got these fire bombs. I can make fire myself. I'm, I just want to distribute one to each of you. I've got three. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, Phallus Mir, aren't you glad we have the rock gnome now with his keen uh, gnome eyes? Uh -huh, yes. Yes. That up for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got him. Yes. Gum Your little phallus. pet rock is so helpful. I have my rolled up <laughs> corn husk. Mm. Drenched in lantern oil. <laughs> All right. All uh, right. Yes. Uh, if we go. are to be looking for Necromancer, this is the most appropriate location for him to be. Now, keep yeah, in cemetery, mind, yes, I mean, as the little rock said, there's going to be lots of dead bodies. So be careful. Let's go search it. Let's go search it. Uh, as you approach uh, the hill, it looks like the hill, of course, is not made of dirt at all, but hundreds of these boxes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are as large as like a horse cart. Some mm -hmm. are, you know, small like a bread box. Most of them are the size to fit a humanoid, as you might expect. Mm. Um, and atop the peak, at the very top, maybe 30 feet up, is a man uh, who appears to be in front of a fire with a huge cauldron set atop it. And he is very uh, focused on what he's doing. He does not seem to notice your approach. And he laughs maniacally as he says, Ah, ha, 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 ha. Quacha, hand me the gallbladder. Mm. And you see a very small uh, frog-like figure uh, walk up behind and offer up something in, his, in their hands, which you can only imagine is a gallbladder of some kind. Mm -hmm. And... I know that I am an uh, expert bounty hunter, but I do not need that knowledge to know anyone that laughs like that. Must be the guy we are trying to catch. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to agree with uh, Alamir here. He's looking pretty necromancery. Remember, we got to take him alive to get this bounty. What would you all like to do? Do you uh, think the cauldron's like acidic or poisonous? That's a good question, but uh, I, I mean... I don't really care. Let's just take, let's just take him. We can question him. Whatever after we have it, it is, it's probably not very good. I can uh, I can flank from the left while you guys cause a distraction on the right and straight on, and I can use my my wonderful bow and arrows here to knock over said uh, Goldrun in front of him. I think that would be smart to make sure that he can't use whatever he's making. Try to get rid of that with our surprise. I think you know to ruin his cauldron. Maybe it's something that he'll use. You, you know, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Oh, well, yeah. Deborah, Deborah, you're you're nice and small. Why don't you go for uh, you know, whatever it looks like he's going to be using to to uh, summon whatever it is in that cauldron, and uh, I'll I'll take him head on, uh, well, and, and try to distract him. Yeah, I'll go with Kaizen to help cause the distraction. Uh, it looks like Batu. By the way, this is Batu. Spoiler alert. If you is uh is a little distracted, mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna see if the assistant spots you coming. Okay. Uh, the assistant does not spot you coming. Aha! Um, uh, I am so like a wisp assistant. in the wind. Fire that, fire that assistant. So I will let you take uh, a round of uh, surprise if you wish. I would like to run uh, up to Batu and, and perform a flurry of blows. Okay. Just so what's to your the, his midsection. 45 jeepers. So uh, Kaizen's movement is 45 feet. Um, that's below your uh, proficiency bonus in the center of your sheet. 45? Yeah, I'll say that you can get up to uh, Batu. If, you, uh, if you're watching the map, uh, I'm going to say that you're able to get to the level below and sort of punch at his ankles. Yeah! Uh, Flurry of before she ankles. gets too close, yep. uh, I, I think I should uh, take my shot on the, the cauldron because, you know, I don't want to Take a shot at the cauldron? Her. Great. Do you want to do you're that like before I run feet? up? Uh, before you get too close. Yeah. 
You're like 50 so, feet away, I would say. So before she gets too close, I'm rolling my d20. That is a 16 plus my attack of 7 on nice. the cauldron. 23. Yeah, I'll say that you hit the cauldron, and the cauldron falls into the fire and sort Ooh. of is like tipping. Um, you now have his attention. I would like to yell at him. Okay. Hey, hey, necromancer guy. Look at us. We're a distraction. A distraction. <laughs> I'm that sorry. That was a I terrible thought... pun. Yes. But, How but dare you like interrupt it. me? I'm going to complete my ritual and become the necromancer I was always meant to be. Who yes. are you? Now that we stop you first and we we hit your we're gonna hit your cauldron. Did we already do that? Yeah, yeah, well well oh, you did hit my cauldron. Well, how dare you hit my cauldron? <laughs> Deborah, do you wanna do anything? Yeah, I want to I want to run up, I guess, uh, try to get as close as I can. I've got a twenty five foot walking speed. I wanna get out of his line of sight and as close as I can to the uh, pile of bodies. And I want to sure. use my yeah. my uh, burning hand spell, and I want to light all the coffins on fire. Great. <laughs> what? <laughs> so we'll put you in the front here. The fucking wild card. <laughs> to be continued next time on Tales from Tiberia. Well, adventurers, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see the origin story behind some of these characters, you can go ahead and click right over here. I think it is here. Also, be sure and check out me and Joven going head-to-head -head in Avengers Connect. That one's uh, right over here. All right, see you next time.